Good morning. It is Monday morning again. It is September 19th, I think, 19th. And I am happy to be with you again. My name is Melissa Ebkin. I'm the pastor of the Iliopolis and Nyanic Christian Churches in Iliopolis and Nyanic, Illinois. I'm the founder of Light Life and Love Ministries and the host of the Pursuing Uncomfortable podcast. And I have a lot I want to share with you this morning. Uh, today they are. Today is the funeral for Queen Elizabeth II, and I've been up watching some of the procession so far, and I'm sure you're probably watching some of it too, or we'll catch some of it later. Maybe not. Whatever you think about the Queen and our thoughts here in the United States are obviously different from those who lived under in her reign. But there is so much to be learned and gained from the life of service that she has modeled. And that's what I want to talk about a little bit today. Who is in a relationship for 70 years? Let's start there. 70 years is a stretch of time that some don't see. Some people don't live to be 70 years old. How many people are in relationship for 70 years? We read when there is a couple celebrating their 70th anniversary, and it's good that we do. It's rare, and it's an accomplishment not only to, to live that long, but to stay in relationship that long. It's remarkable. We often don't have that relationship with our kids for that long. Again, it's rare that we live long enough that we have a relationship with children spanning 70 years. So that's quite a long time. And in that time, there are so many opportunities to have that relationship derailed. And Queen Elizabeth, one of the things that, one of the many things that I so admire about her, along with her tenacity and her service and all of those things, is that she modeled servant leadership so well. She modeled those qualities that kept her in beloved relationship with the people that she served. And that's the key, she served. She was their monarch, she was their queen. She had some authority over them and, you know, authority may not be the right word, but influence, definitely. Power, probably, I would imagine. I'm not sure how their constitution works. I know the monarchy is different today than it was, you know, centuries ago, but there's still a position of power there in the monarchy. But she would describe herself as a servant to the people. And it's not that people are acknowledging her funeral. Take a look at the procession. Spend a little time watching how this is unfolding. People by the tens, hundreds of thousands. I don't know the numbers, but they are so deep along the road and they're not there because they merely are there from duty. Although there are probably some, regardless of how they feel, would be lining the road because that's the duty to do as one's monarch passes away. But they are there out of love, the love that is present in those who are witnessing this procession is truly a thing of beauty. It's a marvel. They didn't just survive her reign. They didn't just endure her reign. They loved her for 70 years. So what can we learn? There are a lot of takeaways and a lot of lessons from her reign as the Queen of England. And I would just like to point out a few of those today because we can incorporate these qualities and our habit and those habits into our lives as well. First, I would like to point off that she served from a place of servant leadership. You know, someone else who talked a lot about servant leadership, Jesus himself said, I come not to be served, but to serve. That is the quality that makes a leader profoundly good. Do they serve those of whom, for whom they have power over? That quality alone is distinguishing among all others in the relationship we have with people. 
So servant leadership is a profound way to lead. And, you know, if you're into reading the kind of literature that goes around in circles of, you know, corporate leadership and things of that nature, and I am, I'm obviously not a CEO at a company, but I do like to read articles on leadership and especially how it evolves in business. And they have this great idea about servant leadership. Yeah. So there is so much power in servant leadership because it comes from vulnerability and it comes from genuine connection. So that's one thing that I think Queen Elizabeth, the late Queen Elizabeth, modeled so well. She stayed connected to the people. And there are three elements here to stay calm, stay connected, and stay the course. She modeled those three things so well. She stayed calm. There are a lot of events that could have had her riled, and she probably did get riled. I'm sure she did. But she managed to stay calm in the moment, to think it through, not just um, react, but she led with calm. And I think she learned that from her father. Her father, George the v fifth or sixth, please help me out there. Uh, he wasn't supposed to be the king. His big brother was. His big brother chose other options. So now her dad has to be the king and he's gotta be king during World War II and at a time when the nation needs to hear him be connected with them. He had to speak over the radio all the time. Not that he was required to, but it was the way that he could be a leader to his people. And he had a speech impediment. He went to great lengths personally to overcome that so he could be the leader he needed to be to the people that they needed him to be. That had to leave a huge impression on Queen Elizabeth. So in times of crisis, that ability to stay calm is powerful. Not only staying calm, especially if you can stay calm when everyone else is losing their faculties. That's a definition of leadership. Staying calm in a chaotic situation, that is leadership. And not only did she stay calm, but she stayed connected. She stayed connected to people. She wasn't some distant ideal. She was connected to the people that she reigned over. And that's so evident in watching her funeral procession today. They feel so connected to her, genuinely. They love her, and that is palpable. Staying connected is a skill. And that is also an art, how we can stay connected to people. Now, how she stayed connected to a nation doesn't seem a lot like how we stay connected to the people in our lives, but it really is. It really is. The principles are the same, though the stage is different. We stay connected through being emotionally available, to sharing our vulnerability, but also maintaining our sense of self. She always upheld tradition. She always followed the, the rules, the protocols. She always did those things. But she also found a way to connect with people. She had a smile, she had a wit, she had humor, she had a playfulness about her. She had a way of welcoming people into her presence in a way that they felt she really cared about them. I saw an interview on YouTube, I believe, with Charlie Rose and Fred Rogers. Charlie Rose asked Fred Rogers to reflect on the profound impact he had had on people and to speculate the numbers, the thousands, the tens of thousands that he had influenced. And without hesitation, Mr. Rogers, Pastor Fred Rogers said, that's not important. The only number that's important is you and me right here. He said, if you can be present in this moment to the person that you are with, that is everything. I love Mr. Rogers. Always have, always will, big fan. But I believe the queen modeled that as well. She was present with people wherever she was. That's something we can do too. Be present 
to the people you are with in the moment you are with them. That's how we connect with other folks. And we can follow up with them. We can share a little bit of our vulnerabilities. And what I marvel at so much with the queen is, you know, she had a, a place of power. She had laws and real people and weapons that protected her place of power. But she didn't feel entitled to it. She didn't feel entitled to the adoration of the people. That's the difference between servant leadership and other types of, I hate to use the word leadership, other ways of being in power. A lot of people are tempted to use power over people. You will obey me, you will love me, you will respect me because I have this position and this power. Okay, maybe, maybe not. But for those who feel that they have to earn that respect, that they are servants of the people that they have power over, that is the difference. And that is so present in the people lining the streets today to watch the queen. She related to them and connected to them as one who was there to serve them. And she had a life of service. We all have read the stats and we can Google this. Google it if you haven't. The many, many ways that she was a servant to her people even before she was the queen. <clears throat> and then she stayed the course. She literally stayed the course for 70 years. Stay calm, stay connected, and stay the course. Was she perfect? Absolutely not. I wouldn't be talking about her today if she were, because none of us can relate to that. We are flawed people doing the best that we can with what we have, where we are. And the best strategy I know for doing that is to stay calm, to stay connected, and to stay the course. There will be a lot of people who will try to sabotage you, who will throw up boundaries, barriers, and resistance, but stay the course. Stay calm, stay connected, stay the course. And there are a lot of different little threads that we can pull from that. Uh, one I want to talk about particularly is criticism. And criticism is one of the things that can throw us off course very quickly. It comes with a bunch of uh, emotionally laden reactions and responses. Criticism isn't all the same. There is constructive criticism. And often that is given from people who ask if you want it. The folks who genuinely give constructive criticism are folks who ask you if you want it. If somebody asks you if you want feedback, chances are it's going to be constructive and there are people that you might wanna take up take them up on their offer. And then there's the other kind of criticism. That's the kind of criticism I want to talk about for a little bit. Uh, constructive criticism, if you want it, accept it. Uh, do what you want with that. The other kind of criticism, and the uh, my mentor in emotional family systems and Bowen theory, the uh, I would travel around a lot of a lot during the early years of my ministry and meet with him and others we were there were a whole group of us that learned from him and he always said he was at the next event he was going to have a tattoo artist there to tattoo on our foreheads backwards that criticism is a form of pursuit so that every time we looked in a mirror we would be able to read that on our foreheads but i want you to take that to heart Criticism is a form of pursuit. And what that means is when people criticize you, and this isn't the constructive feedback, but when people criticize you, there's always a kernel of truth in it. So, you know, acknowledge that. But they criticize you because they need something from you. Hear this very clearly. That kind of criticism that's not constructive criticism or feedback that kind of criticism that just hurts, that isn't asked for, that is a sign that people are wanting something from you. It's a form of pursuit. They need something you have. You have within you something that they want, 
that is lacking in their lives and they want it from you. When we can view that kind of criticism in that light, it really can change our relationship to it. And it can take away a lot of the oomph of the emotional laden response that we have. So for instance, if somebody comes up to you and just lambasts you for whatever reason, okay, there's a kernel of truth there. So acknowledge that kernel of truth. And the worst thing to do is explain, justify, or defend. That's our instinct, isn't it? We want to explain our actions. We want to justify our actions. We want to defend our actions. Not the time. Get rid of that instinct. But just listen. Ask them a question. Do not explain. Do not justify. Do not defend. I know how hard this is. I know. But fight that instinct with all you have and instead ask them a question. Just simply say, tell me more. Can you tell me, you know, find a question to ask them. Practice asking a question. Or just the simple, tell me more about that. And face them, not in an aggressive way, but just in a way that's open, that you're genuinely wanting to hear what they're sharing. And get to the bottom of what they're lacking and what they're wanting. The criticism of that nature is never about you. It is always, always, always about the other person and a lack or a need that they have. And they see in you the answer or the response that they need. That's a different relationship to criticism. And that's a huge game changer for you. When you can understand criticism in that way, that it's not about you at all. 1% of it is about you because we all have flaws and that's their entryway. So acknowledge that little 1%, whatever, don't get wound up in it. But what they are saying, what they're bringing to you, they want a huge emotional reaction from you, but it's all about them, not about you. If you hear nothing else in the message today, learn that about criticism. And watch this in leadership. Watch this in people that model servant leadership. When they get harsh critics, the kind of criticism that isn't good feedback or it isn't constructive, unsolicited, and emotionally laden criticism, they inquire. They do not explain. Do not justify and they do not defend, but they re respond with a question. Tell me more about that. How can I do better or something of that nature? But square up your shoulders, your hips, and your feet to the person in front of you. This body language signifies that we are fully present in that moment and ask a question. That will diffuse the situation and that will get to the point of what the person needs. So that's what I want to talk about today. And I have developed this entire course that I would love to share for you. It's called Filled. It's on lightlifeandloveministries.com and check it out. But these are the principles that we talk about and how you can incorporate these principles into your life so that you can stay calm stay connected, and stay the course. And this is how you improve your relationships and extend them for a lifetime. I'm Melissa Epkin. Thank you for taking the time to be with me today. And until next week, I wish you well. And in the meantime, if you get criticized, do not explain, do not justify, do not depend, defend. Ask a question instead. See you next week. Bye for now.